I'm very excited to be introducing my colleague, Malcolm Nolan, who serves as PBGH's Business Relationship Director. He will help moderate a discussion and questions for the next presentation featuring Jeff Weinberg, President of Care of Caregiver Champion. Malcolm. Good morning. Thank you very much, Christina. I appreciate that. Um, before we get started, I want to remind you all to please um, submit your questions in the Q&A section. Um, please don't use the chat, but any questions you have, please use the Q&A section. All right, Jeff, let's get right into it. Um, Jeff um, developed Caregiver Champion, a healthcare advocacy agency, as a result of working more than 25 years with seniors, the chronically disabled and their families, and witnessing the caring being taken out of today's healthcare. Caregiver Champion helps clients and their caregivers get through the many layers of the healthcare bureaucratic maze and provides creative solutions for families when they need it most. Jeff will, will talk with us today about multi-generational caregiving, where one in five Americans are providing unpaid caregiving to an adult with health or functional needs. All right, Jeff, let's get right into this, sir. Um, you know, before I ask you the first question, Jeff, can you tell us, I read a little bit about it, but I'd like to hear from you why are you so passionate about this? Well, I've been in the field my entire life, and uh, I've always been passionate about helping people and helping them get the best care possible. And as when I developed Caregiver Champion, uh, it was because there's tremendous care being provided in the hospitals and nursing homes, et cetera. However, the caring part of things has changed drastically. And a lot of it has to do with uh, that it's insurance driven and there's other, we're working with less, with less staff. So the caring just doesn't have the place that it used to be able to do. There is no more Dr. Welby's around. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I, I want to thank uh, you, Malcolm, for uh, inviting me to do this, as well as Christina and PBGH and Laura for helping us put this presentation together. Uh, I also want to add that uh, the presentation by the group from NAMI was tremendous. And... Uh, my presentation really fits like a glove with theirs. Uh, there's Absolutely. A lot of, you know, the statistics may be a little different, but the emphasis is really the same. Uh, mine is broad, broader than theirs, but it does fit like a glove. And uh, I was really excited to hear what they had to say. Absolutely. And uh, well, we appreciate your passion, sir, sir and we appreciate um, the work that you are doing. Um, so let's get right into our, our your your, pre your presentation. Um, before we really start talking about employees who are caregivers, let's talk about employees in general. Well, COVID has affected everybody, whether you're an employee or your spouse or whatever. I mean, it has caused tremendous issues for uh, everybody and. Uh, this picture of a woman pulling out her hair uh, says it all. It really does. Uh, I pulled out my hair and now I don't have that. <laughs> I, I joined you with that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when we talk about it from an employee perspective, and this was done by MetLife, uh, two out of three employees state that they are more stressed than ever uh, even before COVID. So that's a significant, that's 60% of the employees are saying they're stressed. And because of the stress and going back to what NAMI says, this has caused increased depression, burnout and overall well-being. We can take the next slide. 
So in continuing with MetLife, and this also follows what they just said in, at the NAMI, two out of five, which is 40% uh, of employees feel that their employers are not offering enough programs to support their well-being. And interestingly enough, three out of four employees, employers feel that they are in fact helping and uh, they feel that their employees are better off because of the financial and other benefits they provide them. Next slide, please. You can tell you the next slide. So this, this is another wonderful picture. Working from home uh, is the new norm. And this is a perfect picture uh, because A, when everybody, when the world stopped, which was around March 13th of last year, um, everybody had to change what they were doing. So how do you create an office at home? Uh, you've got your kids running around. Uh, you feel isolated, not only from your coworkers, but from your friends, your relatives, everything like that. And, and also that you don't get any feedback, but and by and large from your employer. So you do your work and, you know, um, but you're not getting any direct contact from them uh, by and large. Okay, next slide, please. So this is how uh, employers can and should support their employees. And this, this slide actually represents what we ought to continue doing now, as well as what we should continue doing as employees go back into the workforce. So the key as in anything is communication, communication, communication. Absolutely. But, but we want to create a, what we call a holistic well-being. And uh, again, the NAMI presentation talked about this. It's a, it's a wellness approach to care. And wellness is different. I'm sorry, it's a well-being approach to care. It's different than wellness. And because we're going to look at the mental, the physical, the social, the financial aspects of that particular person. Next slide. So the, now we're talking about, and again, it goes back to what was said before, uh, changing the culture. And the culture uh, is one where employers are reaching out to their employees. And it isn't just about, you know, did you get that uh, flow chart done? Uh, it's, it's about uh, employers talking to their employees about how are you handling this? Yeah. What's yeah. happening with you now that you're at home and your kids are running around and whatever else is going on? So we want to look at all of those things. Mm -hmm. And an, a, one of the models that I read about was that the CEO uh, actually called their employees every week and had discussions about all of these different things. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, uh, they gave updates about COVID and about the vaccine. Even now, there's so much confusion about should you mask? Should you not mask? Should you go out? Should you not go out? Uh, you know, is this vaccine any good or don't I want a vaccine? So they, people continue to need uh, some kind of support and somebody to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Now, Jeff, since you've covered the um, how the pandemic has affected the employees in general. Um, let's now talk about how um, this pandemic are affecting employees who are caregivers. So what can or should employers do about this? 
hidden epidemic regarding the burden of caregiving? Well, um, as we just mentioned, Malcolm, uh, employees in general are having big time issues. And now we add to that employees who are caregivers. And the slide that's up there right now talks about the sandwich generation. Yeah. And, you know, the people in the middle of there are smiling, but uh, really the, the, the uh, piece of meat in the middle isn't smiling a whole lot. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are, uh, have a parent or someone that's a relative they're taking care of their own finance, family. And not only are they taking care of them, they're financially supporting them as well, up to six to $10,000 tied up in, in care for the parents. So now we have a, an employee who has stress to start off with, and in addition has the stress of taking care of a parent or family member as well. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, thank you. So this is uh, Mary and uh, as you can see, she's stressed to the max. And what does that do? Well, her health declines. Uh, she isn't as productive at work. Uh, she has more absenteeism. She has more tardiness. And, and sometimes she has to go on a leave of absence because she just can't juggle everything that's going on. Uh, there was a book written um, that was about someone who was taking care of a parent who was, uh, had Alzheimer's. And the book was called The 36-Hour Day. And it's a classic book, and I would recommend it to anybody who uh, is taking care of someone. Um, and it, it means exactly that. I mean, the person feels like their day is 36 hours. Yeah. And it's just uh, unbelievable stress from work to home to wherever. Next slide, please. Now, Jeff, can we talk about the business perspective. We talked about how this has affected um, employees in general, talking about how the pandemic is, is affecting um, caregivers, employees who are caregivers. How is this impacting the business and their bottom line? That's a great question, Malcolm, uh, because um, businesses have to realize that the their, what goes on with their employees is going to affect their bottom line. And uh, you can't stress this enough. So currently, 20% of any company's uh, employees are caregivers. Um, I did a, a workshop. I did a, actually, I taught a class for, with freshman uh, social workers so their average age was uh, about 18 to 20, and it was a class of 40. And I asked them, how many of you are, have been caregivers or no caregivers or your family members are caregivers? Out of the 40, 25 of them raised their hand. Wow. That, that's just amazing. Wow. Uh, so that 20% is growing and it's, it's closer now to 25 to 30%. But because of what happens to the caregiver, going back to the 36 hour day, uh, we have increased absenteeism, increased presenteeism, meaning that their work, they're, they're there, but their mind isn't there. Uh, increased tardiness, people having to go on leave of absences and people really having to quit their job because they just can't handle it anymore. Next slide, please. So because of all of those issues, uh, companies, the average is $200,000 per year wow. is the average loss due to drop in productivity and time off. Next slide, please. This is a big number right here, Jeff. 
That's the a next huge one. number. And this evening is bigger. $2.5 billion mm -hmm. in annual loss to the United States economy. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, going back to what the, the NAMI group mentioned in terms of mental health, if you expand that to just the mental health and caregivers, uh, you're talking about some huge numbers. And it really is important for employers to think about uh, wanting to change the culture and emphasize this kind of uh, well-being kind of philosophy. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So Jeff, what can businesses do um, to help caregivers and ultimately impact their business? Well, it really means changing the culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, like I said before, uh, this is where my presentation and Nami's presentation really fit like a glove. Yeah. Because you have to provide a philosophy that is exactly what they said before, which is that we want to create an environment and it has to be in their policy yeah. and it has to be the CEO, you know, mine isn't take a pledge, but I call it the CEO has to walk the talk, yeah. and, uh, which is a very common kind of uh, expression. But if the CEO doesn't buy into this, it'll never work. Yeah, um, yeah. But we want to set up a corporate caregiving program. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So there is a national program called REACT, mm -hmm. and it means respect a caregiver's time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you talk about a 36-hour day, there's a lot of uh, issues going on here, and time becomes important. Now, REACT was created through AARP, and everybody kind of says, oh, I got my ARP card today, and, uh, you know, I guess I'm really getting old. But AARP <laughs> has done an amazing job in terms of advocacy for people in, in the workforce and in, with other various issues. And uh, anybody that's interested in uh, trying to change their culture, I would really start with uh, AARP and REACT because it's, it, it, it talks about a lot of important things. Next slide, please. So can you tell us some best, best practice strategies? Yes, uh, they're on the next slide. And uh, we have to be able to uh, go through almost similarly to what uh, the GNAMI group did. Uh, but a crucial part of this is actually uh, training the supervisors and managers. Um, I was in a company several years ago and we were doing different aspects of caregiving and had lunch and learns every quarter. And the director of HR, when we tried to figure out what we were going to do next year, she said, our, our uh, supervisors don't get it. They don't even want people to take time off for when their family member dies. Yeah. I mean, that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, th but they don't get it. Uh, yeah. So uh, the best practices are really starting from the beginning, starting from the top, Having the supervisors, the managers buy into this through training them and then getting it out to the employees in general. Next slide, please. Next. Now, Jeff, can we talk about this for about maybe 10, 15 seconds? Because we do want to share about how Caregiver Champion can help. And we want to make sure we have some time for some questions. Okay. Um, just real quick. These are uh, national companies that uh, are setting out and have programs of various types uh, for their employees. And they're pretty big companies. So, uh, but 
we can move on and next slide please. Uh, so here's how we can help. And we can design a program for any company uh, based on what their interests are, what they can afford, those kinds of things. But, and, and basically what we're gonna do is help the company obviously save money, uh, uh, enhance their recruitment and retention efforts, uh, boost their employees' morale, because uh, now the company starts to, the employees feel like this is really family oriented. And it makes me feel good that uh, I'm working for part of this. Um, Chris, Christina mentioned that, uh, you know, the, your, the PBGH is being offered various services. That helps them to realize that, you know, this is a nice company. You know, it's not just uh, about uh, what I do here. Mm -hmm. It's about how it affects me, how it affects my family. And that makes you not only want to stay there, but it wants you to, it helps you to recruit other people to come in because you are able to say to them. I always said when I worked, when I went into a, a hospital or facility, I would I'd say to them, if our employees are talking about how we are in the beauty shop and in the uh, grocery store in a positive way, we've done our job. Mm -hmm. Because if, if they end up saying, I wouldn't send my dog to work there, uh, <laughs> then I don't think we're doing our job. For but, sure. But when we do a family-oriented uh, thing like this, it really makes a difference. Next slide. Okay. Next slide, please. So these are the services that we can provide. And again, we can target uh, any way the company wants. Next slide, please. And, uh, but... Uh, to sum it all up, Malcolm, um, we have to, the, when we talked about the employee in general, and we talked about the holistic approach and communicating with them, all of those things need to be carried through with the employees now that they're returning to work, yes. as yeah. well as now noting that here we have employees that are caregivers or you know, maybe, you know, mental health issues yeah, going yeah. back to NAMI and we got to pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jeff. We do have some time to answer some questions. I do see some questions here. Um, the first question is, uh, is cultural com um, competence, competency, yeah, competency development and training being prioritized for mental health professionals? It has to be prioritized. Um, if you don't prioritize that, it will never reach the level that where it needs to be. And um, the next question is, we are hearing about the tsunami of mental health coming as a result of the impact on our kids from school. Are you working at the pediatric level or with employers who cover children in their benefits? How does that look different? It really doesn't um, look different. What, it, what we want to look at is how, what are our employees affected by? Yeah. And it could be their children. It could be their, uh, their uh family members, uh, it could be uh, any, any aspect. But when you start to create an environment where you're caring about that employee, we go back to the philosophy of the employee's well-being. And the well-being goes beyond uh, what I would call a wellness program. For example, a lot of companies have uh, you know, weight loss programs or control your blood pressure programs or 
uh, how to deal with diabetes. So they're, they're specific to a certain areas. And those are effective to a point, but they're employee er oriented and they don't really go beyond what the employee does after they leave work. And here we're looking at all of the other issues that happens to people who leave work. I, when I was working in healthcare, uh, there was, you know, most of the employees that I had were uh, women and most of them were single parent women who had children at home. And that in itself caused them stress to the max. Yeah. And, and sometimes having going to work was the best part of their day. Yeah. So it really is taking a look at how does how do we how are we affected? How are we as employees affected both at home and at work? Absolutely. Well, Jeff, great presentation. Appreciate you, sir. Again. Thank you for the work that you are doing. This does end our time. Um, we're going to take a five minute break, everyone. Please come back at 11.05. Thank you.